Anybody else? It's good to see each one of you out uh, this evening. Let's uh, let's turn to Acts chapter number two. We'll read verses uh, forty-one through forty-seven. Then we'll have a word of prayer. Verse 41 says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and that the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as they, as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Let's, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are tonight. Uh, thankful for this great country you give us to live in and the privileges you've given us uh, through being a citizen of this country. And I just want to, again, lift up a revival come into our land, Lord, that uh, we would uh, seek your face before making any kind of decisions. Thank you for your word tonight, and as we look to it, open our hearts up to it. We praise you, Lord, for Miss Elizabeth Henderson doing better, and uh, we just ask you to continue to be with her and these others that we mentioned today. And Lord, uh, be with us tonight as we look to your word. Uh, we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So looking back to verse 41, they that uh, gladly received his word, you know, if you remember from last last uh, time uh, in Acts 2, they, they had asked a, a question there in verse 37, what then shall we do, or what shall we do? And he told them to repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, and you should, then that they should receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so... They that received his word were baptized, and that on that day, uh, that would have been a great day the, uh, in the Baptist church to baptize three times. The preacher would have got tired and had, had to probably had to have a tag team uh, during all that, baptizing uh, three thousand souls. Uh, verse, verse forty-two is a is a verse that we want to spend a pretty good deal of time on this evening. Uh, tells us several things that were active in the early church life, and uh, we want to spend some time looking at each one of those. Uh, they could, First of all, they continued steadfastly, and that means that they didn't quit, they didn't back off, they didn't fade away, they didn't slip back, they continued on in what the apostles were given from the Lord, teaching them, and uh, so they continued steadfastly into doctrine, and I've, I've shared with you before that... Uh, there was a time that, uh, you know, down through the years, I don't know, I hadn't got a count of how many folks have called me, asked me to come to their church or come to their service and preach. But uh, got a call one time to, to come to this gathering and uh, said, we want you to come preach, but we don't want you to preach on any doctrine. And I kind of had in my mind what they, what they meant, but... Uh, and on the other hand, I uh, wondered what they wanted me to preach out of because any time you open God's Word, you're preaching on uh, doctrine. And that is simply this, the things that are taught, and in our case, the things that are taught in Scripture. So they, uh, one group of writers said the, the teaching would include both what Christ taught his actual death, resurrection, and ascension. It would be the same teaching and instructions that we have here in the New Testament. 
and that the disciples wrote to various churches, bodies of believers, it would be no be be no difference in the proclamation that was going on. They continued, uh, clung to, abided by the apostles' doctrine. And then uh, the next word there in that verse is fellowship. If you'll turn over with me to 1 John chapter number 1, there are uh, several kinds of fellowship that we can have. You and I as believers, our fellowship needs to hinge upon Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't think it's in the church covenant anywhere. I don't think it's in our constitution or bylaws here. I don't think it's in the Baptist faith and message, but uh, a lot of Baptist churches has, uh, the folks that attend those churches have this idea that if fellowship's going to be involved, there has to be a meal somewhere. But uh, we're going to read a verse in 1 John that it don't have anything about food, physical food involved in it. Uh, 1 John 1 and verse number 3 uh, says this, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you. So the, the things that uh, they'd seen... Uh, one of the apostles is the writer of this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle John, who uh, oftentimes in Scripture, in, in his own writing in the book of John, he describes himself as the one who Jesus loved. He was the one that leaned upon Jesus' breast at the uh, Last Supper. And he said, These things we've seen and heard we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us now the word fellowship itself simply means this sharing something in common and if we are going to have any common ground uh, among ourselves as springfield first baptist church if we're going to have any common ground between us and the, the church down the road the church up the road the church over yonder and back over there it needs to hinge upon one person, and that's Jesus Christ. We ought to be able to come together upon the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So he said that we're declaring these things unto you that you may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So they continued steadfastly. They clung to the apostles' doctrine. They clung to fellowship. Uh, I got asked a question yesterday. And uh, I didn't really care for the answer I had. And uh, you might not care for the answer I have, but it's the answer I got. I was asked yesterday at one of the gatherings we went to, Marty, do you think churches will ever get back to what they were? And my answer was, I'm afraid that they won't. There's a word that uh, starts with an H, ends with a T, and uh, I guess if, uh, if I go back to my phonics lessons from a long time ago, Abba is in there in the middle of it. And uh, you throw all that together, you got habit. Uh, some people don't like the fact that coming to church can be a habit. But it can be. And I'm going to throw it out there that it's a good habit. If we're at home and uh, can't uh, join in, uh, can't go physically, I think uh, we have the privilege of uh, technology that allows us to go right into the church house. But I, I believe this with all my heart. If we're able to come, Hebrews 10.25 got to come in there somewhere. And you say, well, what does Hebrews 10.25 say? It says this, Forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approach. Uh, I believe when, if we're able, 
when God's house is open, if we're able, we need to be there. Now, uh, you say, well, well, down through the years, uh, I've had people say, well, Marty, you just don't know. Oh, but Marty does know. I know the habit of coming to church, and I know the habit of excuses coming up saying, mm, uh, mm. But I want you to see what they did in verse 42 of Acts chapter 2. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, sharing one thing at least in common, and that was they knew Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And as we talked about this morning, I'm going to be a companion of those that know him. Who's my company going to be? It's going to be folks that know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And, you know, down through the years, uh, I've known people, and uh, I'm, I'm looking at one of them right now. I used to work with him at Lexington High School. That uh, Jimmy's here, and I dare say this, that many of us in the shape, have gone through what Jimmy's gone through, we probably wouldn't have made the effort to be here tonight. Went to church with a lady, and they, uh, they changed the rules of this thing because they thought that she was going to have to miss. They, they gave out perfect attendance awards at this church. They did so every three months, or as they said, at every quarter. And uh, I, I forget what I got them up to a couple of years, I think. Perfect attendance, maybe, for Sunday school. But she came down with cancer. And so they made an addendum to their rule. They said, well, you can miss one Sunday. And that'll be all right. But guess what? She didn't miss no Sundays. She went through treatments. She kept coming. And I think uh, I don't know if they finally quit that thing or what, but she, I think she got up to about 15 years perfect attendance, if I remember correctly, at least. And uh, so that's the kind of people that I want to hang out with, folks that hold on to what they got and don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And, I, I, you know, I'm looking around tonight, and you say, well, we're here. And I say, Amen. Look what else they did in verse 42. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, and breaking of bread. Now, they probably, I don't know, they probably didn't hand out one of these. That had dates and things of things that was going to do. If the preacher remembered to look down and see that on the 14th we're having a business meeting, uh, there has been times when that just went on by because I, I forgot to look. But they probably didn't have this, but they probably knew if we're going to church today, they're probably having the Lord's Supper. Guess what? They went anyway. They went anyway. If you turn up with me to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. And verse number 26. Just want to talk to you just a little bit about the Lord's Supper. Because uh, for some folks it's way back on the back burner. But I... tend to enjoy the times that we have the Lord's Supper. Uh, if you can enjoy stuff just a little bit more because I get to talk to some folks as a family that uh, the way we do it most of the time that I don't have the opportunity to do otherwise. 
I get to pray with some folks that uh, I wouldn't too, get to personally otherwise. But 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26, it says this, For as off as you eat this bread, drink this cup. Now, did it say how often? No. But ever how often you do it, you do show the Lord's death till he come. I've talked to folks down through the years that have told me that they don't believe in celebrating Christmas. And I don't know if uh, it was a pause and they just kind of looked over at me. And Anyway, they gave me the opportunity to speak. And here's what I said. Ain't you glad he was born? Well, yeah. Then why not celebrate his birth? And we uh, meet each and every Sunday to celebrate his resurrection. But I want you to know this. Without his death, there'd been no resurrection. And as we partake of the parts of the Lord's Supper, as we partake, as we eat that bread, representing the Lord's body that he gave for us, as we drink the fruit of the vine that represents the blood that he shed for us, as it says there on that table, I believe, this do in remembrance of me, or in remembrance of me. We do, as, as often as we do it, we show the Lord's death till he come. He gave us that as an ordinance, baptism as an ordinance, the Lord's Supper as an ordinance, and it ought not be put on no back burner. And here's another one. If you look back to Acts 2 and verse 42, They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, and breaking of bread, and in prayers. Uh, you announce that you're having a prayer meeting? I've been there. I've been there when the sign was put up. And in so many words, the sign didn't speak, but in so many words, it was one of these things. Shh, we're having prayer. Sign didn't speak to me, but in so many words, that's what it said. We're having a prayer meeting. How many folks would show up? Well, the folks that we read about over in Acts 4 and 23 this morning, we didn't get down, I don't think, this morning in verse 31. And maybe we of the opinion like that Sunday school teacher I heard that time that says, uh, I don't want to be like Paul because God might use me. Well, maybe we don't want, might not want to have a prayer service because the Lord might show up. But in Acts chapter 4, when they were let go and went to their own company, they told them all that had been done to them, all that had been said to them, all the threatenings that had been made. And they just had an old-fashioned prayer meeting right there. You say, what did they pray about? They asked, one of the things they asked was, Lord, you give us boldness to speak your name. To do exactly, in other words, to do exactly what they told us to quit doing. You give us boldness. And when they got done, the Lord showed up. And gave them boldness to speak in his name. The place where they were gathered was shaken. And they were given boldness to speak in his name. So are these things that ought to be evident in our church life? Yes. We need to keep teaching and preaching his word. We need to continue in fellowship one with another. 
We need to continue having the Lord's Supper. We need to continue praying together, lifting one another up. you look at verse 43 down through verse 46 of Acts chapter 2 fear came upon every soul I ain't talking about being afraid of the dark I'm talking about having God in their rightful place in each one of their lives. Fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. I'm going to caution you again, caution each one of us again. Why don't we see God move the way he has in the past? Well, I want to ask you, are we looking for him to move as he has in the past? Are we okay with how everything's going? We okay where our country's going? Oh, we live in the greatest country on the face of the earth. There's no doubt about it. Are we okay with the spiritual condition of our country? Are we looking for God to move? Are we looking for revival? Are we praying for revival? Verse 44 says, And all that believed, uh, and all they that believed were together and had all things common, sold their possessions, goods, parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Fellowship on one thing, and that's on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Several writers I've read down through the years ask this question. And we'll get to that more as we get on over into Acts chapter 4. But some people wonder about the tithe. Are we still supposed to give 10%? Well, I think that's a, a standard that's been set. And uh, lots of writers, several writers that I read regularly ask this question. Which one do you like the best? The 10% of the tithe or the 100% of Acts? Because they gave all. Tells us right there. They sold their possessions, goods, in verse 45, parted them to all men as every man had need. So which, which one are you satisfied with? 10%? Or are we satisfied rather with the book of Acts 100%? But I do want to tell you this. I know this is in the Old Testament, but I believe the standard is still there. Look over with me to Malachi, last book of the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 3, verse number 10. And y'all might think I'm beating the drum too heavily tonight, but my Bible says the first word of Malachi 3 and verse 10 is a word that you, means that you've got to come with it. Now, I, I know during the spell we've been in the last year, year and a half, that there's been times when we could, could not do that word, Malachi 3 and verse 10. We had to sin. But the way I read that is, used to be a saying about, I think, uh, bringing, don't, don't send your kids to church. And you think, well, what was I trying to get at? What kind of saying was that? Don't bring your kids, don't carry, don't send your kids to church. Well, what the last part of that saying was this: bring them. 
And my idea I get out of Malachi chapter 3 is you come and bring your offering with you and leave it at the storehouse. Malachi 3 and verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me thou therewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall be not be room enough to receive it. Uh, the Lord, during this time, has greatly blessed our church in that uh, I've heard other churches testify to this fact that they were worried, they were concerned about having a business meeting during the pandemic because how was finance is going to work? And they reported, uh, I've read about it, they reported that it's almost like they didn't miss a beat. And here at this church, you have given faithfully and keep giving faithfully. But I like the way that reads, bring it. And when we have the opportunity, bring it. That means you come and bring it with you to the storehouse. Now look back with me to Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47. So they did it with gladness and singleness of heart. Look what they were doing. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And look what the Lord did. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. I'm, I'm going to have to write down this church's name uh, because I reckon I'm of the age that I don't remember things like, some things like I used to. I can remember things that happened uh, 40 years ago uh, like that was yesterday, but I, sometimes I can't remember yesterday uh, too well. But uh, I read about this church week by week. about the souls that are being saved at this particular church. I want to rejoice in the Lord with them. I don't want to be jealous of them, but I want to rejoice in this, that the Lord is still at work. This morning... Uh, a young man, younger than me anyway, uh, came forward who was saved just a few weeks ago, and he has surrendered today to the call of the ministry. And again, I'm going to have to write down what this uh, church name is where I can tell you what it is, or maybe you can follow it, keep up with it, the goings on, because it almost ain't a week that goes by that... Somebody's not being saved. Somebody's not being baptized there. And verse 47 says this, Praising God and having favor with all people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. May we be, as we said many, many times, may we be about the Lord's business. May we be about his business. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, uh, for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are tonight. And again, thank you for this country that you've given us to live in, that you've blessed us by allowing us to be born here in the United States of America. And Lord, uh, 
I just lift up our country spiritually to you, Lord, that you'd send a revival, Lord, and, and let, it, let it begin with me. May I be more about your business. And Lord, as we come together and have fellowship with one another, I just ask you to bless that sweet fellowship that we have in you. And Lord, as we go our separate ways tonight, Lord, you, you have your way in each one of our lives, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.